let me explain how we make a light emitting diode from an, uh, a molecular semiconductor um, as we do with an OLED. So we start with the semiconductor, uh, which has the characteristic is that if we, ha if we plot energy vertically, we have a load of energy levels that are empty, and then we have what we call the semiconductor gap. And below that, we have energy levels that are um, filled. Let me just draw those and make them right. So we have a manifold of levels which we pour electrons into. Um, in chemistry terms, we would call that um, um, filling up bonding orbitals. Um, and let me just put one more in there as the last orbital. Um, and what we do is we put two electrons in to each orbital, into each bonding orbital. Uh, and those are the, if you like, the valence levels or bonding orbitals. And then there's an energy gap, which we tune to be the right color, to give the right color of emission. And then we have uh, empty orbitals, which uh, are uh, generally in semiconductor terms, parlance called conduction levels. Uh, chemists would tend to call them anti-bonding orbitals, they're high energy. So if we make an LED, uh, what we will do uh, is we will have um, electrodes to either side and we will introduce an electron uh, from one side um, which will um, occupy the lowest unfilled level. And then on the other side, uh, we need to extract an electron uh, so that what we end up with is an empty state there uh, and that is sometimes referred to as um, we, we, we can describe that analogously as injecting a hole. Uh, so we do that and if we've set that up correctly, then what can happen is that this electron can just drop down to end up here. And as it does so, it will emit a, a photon of light. Um, and that way um, we, uh, we use electrical energy with an energy. Um, the energy available is the difference between the uh, the, the bottom, uh, the, the top of the valence states and the bottom of the conduction states. So electrical energy has, in effect, by the time you've looked at the external circuit, lifted this electron up to here, and then it drops down again and produces a photon. Now the particular engineering that I've not shown here is to arrange that we have electrodes that on one side uh, will prepare an electron to come in at the right energy to go onto the conduction band state. And on the other side, where we can inject a hole at the right energy to uh, enter onto the highest lying occupied level. And that requires significant design and engineering of the interfaces between um, the organic um, emitter and the, the two electrodes. Uh, and that, that's where a lot of the artwork goes in. So let me have another go um, at describing that structure. So here is my semiconductor where we have uh, occupied levels and empty levels. That's the semiconductor gap. And let me just draw a vertical line to show where we move from uh, the materials uh, that emit. So this is the semiconductor that produces light. And then to one side, uh, let me have an electron injector. So I might, I would like to design a material um, that has its conduction band state um, uh, aligned with, this, with the semiconductor. But I will try to arrange that its valence band levels are deeper lying. Um, and then um, further away still, I might have a metal um, which uh, will have a work function something like this. So for electron injection, something we'd quite like is calcium, the nice low work function. And, the, and here we have the um, 
electron transport layer here. So an electron from the calcium will travel into the electron transport layer and then onto the um, conduction band level on the semiconductor. And then analogously for hole injection, I'll have a hole transport layer and I will again align levels so that I've got good alignment for the, in this case, the valence band states and an offset. We have a bluer material uh, so that it's not very good at allowing electrons in. And again, I will have a metal with a, this time a high work function. So something like gold would work well. And in this case, I would think of, um, like, let me just do it as an electron process. This, the electron here would move um, out and across to the gold. That would be the process of hole injection. And what we've done with this device is arrange that we have easy injection of electrons from the left, of holes from the right, um, but an, as an electron comes in, when it reaches the other side of the semiconductor region, uh, there's then a barrier and it won't go further. Um, and in a comparable way, as we uh, run a hole in, um, it goes easily into the semiconductor and then there's a barrier uh, which prevents it going further. So that way we can find electrons and holes in the active semiconductor. It's easy to say, lots of engineering.